Okay, thank you for joining us today. Our first painting for the series is going to be a simple still life of some oranges. I call it simple because we're using basically three round objects. Uh, there's a lot of principles of lighting and shadow that go into something like this. So um, I thought it would be a nice way to start. Before I begin, I just want to go over the colors that I put out on my palette. I have white, black, that's yellow, orange, red, magenta, purple, ultramarine blue, that's phthalo turquoise, phthalo green, and yellow ochre. Now, from the yellow to the green, these are colors that we see on the color spectrum, which we'll go over on another video. The ochre is an earth tone, so I kind of put that separate. I like to keep a nice line of the, basically the rainbow colors going across there, and black and white, uh, very valuable. The first thing we're gonna do is um, what's called a block in drawing. This is a valuable drawing lesson for, for you, whether you're painting still life, landscape, even portraits, seascapes. And what I like to do is just make a little bit of a, since my background is kind of gray, I'll just make a little bit of a gray color here. Working on a very bright canvas, a white canvas, usually I tone it down to about the color of my palette. But um, I just thought we'd start, get this thing going. So what I look for is some basic shapes. And I see that my oranges are coming over this way here like that a little bit, and that way like that. I also have you know, a baseline. This is just a good way to start a painting because what you can do now is you can decide how big or small. You don't have to start the drawing and then later on say, oh, it's, I did it too small or I did it too big. You can start to see it now. So I'm looking at the angle of those oranges, top, bottom, side, and, and the bottom. And now I'll just do a quick sketch. The one in front that's kind of more oval. You know, looking at them, they, they look relatively round, but certainly oval in shape. And this one, I know the line's coming up here, and I'm about like that with this shape. You notice how I'm keeping it real light. I don't want to get too much paint on there. That's going to get in the way later. Okay, so I got my, my pictures, my uh, oranges in a relatively good place. Maybe I might even just real quickly lay in where my shadows might be. Over there and over here. Cool. I'm painting this using uh, just a regular north light uh, from my window. And it's approximately 3 o'clock, so um, it's like the sun is a little bit lower in the sky, causing longer shadow in my picture. Depending on where your light source is, all this is going to change. And then this this light is coming down here. Before I could really get my values of the oranges, you know, how light and dark they are, that's what we refer to as our values, I need to get that background covered. i got to get rid of that white paint. So we can go to a bigger brush. I'm using a number 10. Um, the kind of brushes that I'm using right now are important in this particular video, but we'll talk about brush size later. I just want to get a feeling of light direction. So since the light's coming here, this side is sort of broken up about there. And this front corner seems to be a little bit lighter. I'm just partitioning out where my lights and darks might be in this particular picture, but I don't have to get crazy about that yet. I'm gonna hit that ultramarine blow. Right, we'll get some of that into our mix. As to the light and dark, right? It's very difficult to judge it on a gray palette and a white canvas. So, Putting a little bit more medium in here than usual, only because I'm working pretty fast. 
Might even get a touch of phthalo turquoise in there. This is a replacement color for what I used to use, manganese blue or cerulean blue. Cerulean didn't have the intensity that I wanted in a lot of situations. So manganese worked good, but manganese has become um, discontinued. That's where my shadow is, so I'm gonna work right over that. I can always get it back. This foreground seems to have a feeling of some yellow in there, right? This front corner seems pretty dark, so I'm going to go right over there and hit that. This is just for getting everything blocked in. Um, just kind of a rule of thumb. We have, it's sort of like a mathematical logic. We have an orange object. We have some bluish gray background working its way into it. Uh, reflecting into the object. We're going to get a touch of blue in, in the shadow, especially on the bottom surface. And the shadow of that orange is we really just we're going down the spectrum. So we have some orange, and because that's getting darker, maybe we'll get a little magenta in there. Just in that mix. And to darken that down, let's try a little ultramarine blue and see if that works. Ultramarine blue has <clears throat> red in it, right? It has the uh, violet color bending towards the red. So that might work pretty nicely as a uh, relatively just a drawing color. This light on here is kind of on the flat side. Um, so we're just going to. I'm just going to say orange is creating a little cast shadow on that side. So we're going to get that in place as well. This is probably darker down here. And this orange has uh, kind of starting at the top here because our light's kind of coming from the side. So it's not a conventional light side, dark side. This is kind of a flatter light. The light is coming on a bit of an angle, so we might even have some shadow on that backside. And that's really all I want to get right now. So I can actually go right in now and get some of the uh, orange itself color in there and get, get this thing moving along. So maybe I'll just take some flat orange as is right in, kind of just get that on there, right, right about there. Get this guy. You know, my personal way of painting is not to get a ton of paint on there. There are painters that are excellent painters that like to load up the canvas with paint. But I want to have just the right amount of paint in there to do the job that I need to do, and that's build shadow and light. So we've got a lot of our highlight, or actually it's not even the highlight, it's the middle tone. And I like this tone that I had before. I'm just going to add a little bit more red to it. Yeah, so that magenta works nice. It's a dark red in the red family. But it starts to bend towards the violet, so it works very nicely as a shadow color. We kind of keep in mind what is shadow and what is reflection. That's a very big important part of painting. It's reflection on this side. Maybe we can go into some purple to really get it darker. 
One of the things when you're painting still lifes is you don't use nearly as much gray in objects, whether it's fruit or flowers. And I'm generalizing during fruit or flowers than you would if you were painting a landscape or a seascape. Now you're wondering why there's shadow on the side, but there's actually, the way this is situated, the light's bouncing, there's actually shadow. You can look at that orange coming in on that side. 